so in another video which you won't see until the future we had the first run with the new forge which worked beautifully power arm had its first proper run which was also good because it's now running speed control but at the minute the floor is about six or eight inches thick and we kind of knew that with a hundred pound power hammer on something it was eventually going to take its toll well we didn't think that that would only be one day and about four hours work at that so it's actually raw bolted in the 16 ground anchors in the ground yeah it's pulled them out the floor and the whole machine which we know weighs about 600 kilos was actually picking itself up off the recoil and in doing so, let's put a rather healthy crack up this wall. Not great. So, plan. Should we choose to accept our mission, hello dog, is to move the anvil over here, move the fly press and stuff back against the wall, make some space, move that little small press out of the way, lift this up, Move it over here, and then we're going to cut out, which we knew we'd have to do, a square, inset the concrete, and a rebar frame, and everything to hold it all down, because it's just too much for this. So, what we're going to do is show you, on that one, there, the fun of doing all this jiggery-pokery the best we can. And then when we get to something descriptive, we shall stop and have a chat. So, enjoy. As you may have may have not seen but our camera which was filming all of this the memory card corrupted so I'm not sure how much you've seen or not seen however we uh, punched the hole in the wall made up a bit of a shoot contraption and there so there's a few bricks to go back in and there's two cubic meters of concrete now in here all floated off with our studs ready for boarding and everything else and if you can just sort of see out there you might be able to see it you might not probably hear it it's absolutely lashing it down so we're all soaking wet absolutely blathered concrete but 
that's where we're at. So the next thing that you'll get to see is that honker monka getting lifted by this chonker monka going back into position onto here. Hopefully this time we'll get it all on film because the memory card won't corrupt so we'll find out what happens then, shall we? Hmm. Yes. Right, you join us many sleeps later. I don't know how many, but quite a few. This is all cured. We've got the hardwood boards are in, drilled with a bit of slack so we can bang them up to each other. Hello, scrappy dog. Ready to go back in. Hole in the wall's been filled, which obviously made things a lot easier. Cleaned all the chunks off the floor. And basically, we're ready to move you back to that mount. You can watch us drag that bit, pile loads of stuff back on here, try and lift it up and manipulate it into place. And cue super high speed footage again. Enjoy. So we return even more sleeps later since this was all fitted in and I'll show you some of the modifications that we've done. Obviously this is down on the blocks now, it's all screwed down good and tight and what I've done is actually put eight full cans of foam inside every single thing that is tubular because all the legs are tubular and the back of it's tubular, there's loads of hollows in there, cut down some of the ring and then we've wrapped a load of it. This is sound deadening, put for your, for your cars, wrap the legs in that, wrapped a load of the panels in the background and a couple of the other things so. Uh, it's considerably quieter than what it was before. Um, so last time you'll remember and, uh, in the original video which will be linked underneath this one uh, we had this clutch arrangement which was actually off the original lathe that the front half of this is built from and the, the dovetails and stuff. Uh, we went through several iterations of the clutch um, before we finished up using some ceramic style pads which you can still see are in there somewhere. We're getting right. yeah, some ceramic style clutch pads but to be honest it was just awkward and it's a lot of weight and it could take it, not too bad. I apologise. Apologise for the banging in the background, but Carl's busy working on other things. So uh, what we've done is actually just straight face bolted all this up. Um, so now it's direct drive and we'll put a sprocket on it instead. So there's no slip in, there's no belts, none of that rubbish. And what we've done is actually put in here a linear potentiometer in there, combined with a small NASA space machine micro switch and a motorbike damper on the lever. So now, with it being already running 
three phase on a VFD from the wall what we've done is set it up um, so that you've got creep which is the slowest amount of frequency that it's comfortable running at which is about 12 or 13 Hertz direct drive so let's you itch it round so what it'll do is potentiometer moves and it has to see above 13 Hertz and come off the limit on the micro switch and then it'll start and it'll run right up to full speed and then it'll come back now the downside to having it running like this and then having a spring actuated treadle which we can see here is uh, when it was being sprung returned before because it's directly phased uh, frequency driven when you let go of the pedal and it just sprung up to a stop it the, the frequency will act like a brake so which is good for parking it it's not so good when you're trying to stop 55 kilos swinging around on an arm and a direct drive against your motor in your gearbox and if the force is just ridiculous so what we've done is actually rather than tuning that in parameters and all of the rest of it up there it's easier to actually just mechanically do that and now if i put you down here you can see that we've got a nice I'll let, just let go of that look you see it's nice smooth action now i ain't got the forge running or anything so i can't show you something hot underneath it but what i can show you is just how it works and then if you stay with us when I finally get my laptop sorted properly, we'll be able to uh, actually show you it doing some work because it's considerably better than it was before now. The action's still a little weird, but it, it's much better than it was before. So you see it saying there, look, minimum frequency 11 hertz, but it's not going anywhere because it's parked on the micro switch. And I can just gently creep it over without clacking the dice because the die sets have been moved as well. So I'll just show you from back here. You can see, I can just pitch it over if I want. No problem. It's quiet, energy efficient. I don't know that's a high priority, but the quietness is nice. It's not running in the background all the time. Uh, it's only using the grunt that you ask for, so you can see it's... Dead controllable. Not too bad, you can park it relatively easily, which is nice when you do it in a hurry. And the belt actually needs tightening up with still one belt in the top there, look one belt so yeah a lot of work as these projects usually are and that's just the way that it goes so we'll see you next time hope you like that got any questions stick them down there laters